Hello, um, today in Unit 1, Lesson 4, we are going to talk about some function algebra. And we are going to talk about compositions. Or what you may have heard as composite functions. So a lot of this will be kind of a review for you. I think you've seen a lot of function algebra before. Um, but when we talk about function algebra, I'm just going to kind of do a lot of examples today. So we're going to be talking about finding, um, I'm going to give you two functions, f and g, and we're going to be talking about finding what happens if you add them together, what happens if you subtract, um, what happens if you multiply, and then finally, what happens if you divide. Oops, f divided by g of x. Okay, um, so we talked a little bit about functions. Um, and we've talked about these as being referred to as f of g, or I'm sorry, f of x and g of x. So today we're going to look at what happens if you do f plus g of x and f minus g of x and so on and so forth. So um, we'll come back to composite functions in just a minute. So to get us started, let me give us a function um, f. So I'm going to say that f of x is equal to x squared plus 2. And then I'm also going to give us a g function to work with, and g is going to be negative 4x plus 7. Okay, um, sometimes you'll see um, a third function. Just be careful to look and see um, which ones they're working with when they start asking you about the algebra. Like they might ask you on one question to find f plus g of x, and on one question to find g plus h of x. So just be careful that you're working with the correct function. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and do all four of these with this one problem. And so I'm going to start with f plus g of x. So that's the same thing as saying f of x plus g of x. So those two things really mean the same thing. So either way you see this written, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this right here for f of x. So that's going to be x squared plus 2. And I'm going to fill this right here in for g of x. So I'm just going to say plus negative 4x plus 7. So this right here is f of x. And this one over here is g of x. And I'm just going to take those two functions and add them together. Okay, so the only thing I can do here is combine like terms. So I just have the 1x squared. It's the only one I have. And then I'm going to say plus negative 4x or minus 4x would mean the same thing. And then I've got a 2 and a 7, so I'm going to say that that means plus sign. So that right there is f plus g of x. Okay, so very similar. I'm going to do the same thing really for f minus g of x is the same thing as saying f of x minus g of x. Okay, the biggest difference here is that the parentheses are very important because when I have a minus sign, I want to distribute that negative. So be very careful with that. So f of x is not so important to have the parentheses, but I'm going to go ahead and draw them just to make the point. And then I'm going to subtract g of x, negative 4x plus 7. Okay, so again, here's f of x and here's g of x over here. Okay, so again, what's really important on this one is that I distribute this minus sign, this negative sign right here, into my parentheses. So watch out for that. All right, so I've still got my x squared plus 2 right there. And then I'm going to say a negative times a negative gives me a positive 4x. And then I'm going to distribute that negative sign into here. So kind of think of that as being multiplied by a negative 1. And that's going to be a minus 7 over here. So I still have just the 1x squared. I've got now a positive 4x, and then I'm going to do 2 minus 7 gives me negative 5. Okay, so subtracting them changes up my new function um, just a little bit. Okay, uh, very similar. f times g of x is the same thing as f of x times g of x. I'm going to use that little dot for my multiplication symbol. Okay, so f of x, I'm going to need some parentheses this time, x squared plus 2, and I'm going to multiply that times negative 4x plus 7. And hopefully over the years you've gotten really good at multiplying two binomials together. So you can use FOIL if you want to, or you can use distribute, your choice. But I'm going to multiply x squared 
times negative 4x, that's going to give me negative 4x cubed. Then I have x squared plus 7, I'm sorry, times positive 7 gives me plus 7x squared. All right, then I'm going to take my 2 and do the same thing over here. So 2 times negative 4x gives me minus 8x. And 2 times 7 gives me 14 plus 14. And there's nothing I can combine on that one, so I'm going to just say that that right there is my answer. So my answer is going to be negative 4x cubed plus 7x squared minus 8x plus 14. Okay. And finally, f divided by g of x is going to be the same thing as f of x divided by g of x. So just another way of writing that same thing. So f of x on top is x squared plus 2, and g of x on the bottom is negative 4x plus 7. And if there was something in that that I could um, factor or um, let simplify, I would go ahead and do that. But there's nothing here um, that will simplify, and so that right there is going to be my answer. Okay, so nothing to simplify in that fraction. Okay, so let's take a minute to talk about a composite function. Um, a composite function you may have seen before, or a composition, um, and we talk about those as looking like this. It's going to have a little circle in the middle. So instead of being multiplied, it looks like that. And so you may have heard of these called fog and golf because it kind of looks like you're writing the word fog. Okay, so that right there means that we are finding f of g of x. That's how you read it, and we write it f of g of x. Okay, so that means f of g of x, and that's the way that you write it, and then you can simplify it into that. And what's important here is that we're going to work from the inside out. Okay, um, very much like when we were evaluating functions with numbers, um, compositions are kind of similar. If you start off trying to find like f of g at 2, then you're probably going to come out with an answer that's a number. And if you start off working with something like f of g of x or f of g at x plus 1, then you're going to end up with some variables in your answers. So just a clue for when you start finding answers, what that's going to look like. All right, let me give you a function, a couple of functions to work with here. I'm going to say that f of x is 3x squared plus 2. And g of x, I'm going to work with um, 2x plus 1. Okay, so there's my two functions, and I'm going to work with these a couple of different ways. So let's start on this one by finding f of g of 2. Okay, so let me rewrite that first in a little better method like this one up here. I'm going to change that into being f of g of 2. Okay, and again, I'm going to work from the inside out on this thing. So I'm going to start by finding this inside piece right here, which is g at 2. Okay, so g is this 2x plus 1. So I'm going to take the x out. I'm going to replace it with 2 and add 1. So 2 times 2 gives me 4 plus 1 gives me 5. Okay, so now I can take this piece out and replace it with 5. So now I'm trying to find f at 5. Okay, so that's going to be this function over here. So that'll be 3 times 5 squared plus 2. All right, don't forget your order of operations. So 5 squared gives me 25, times 3 gives me 75, and plus 2 gives me 77, and that's going to be my answer. Okay, so again, we started with a number inside here, and my answer ended up being a number out there, no variables. Okay, let me give you just a minute to find g of f of negative 4. Okay, so start by rewriting that in our more regular notation. This time g is going to be on the outside, so g of f at negative 4 and then see if you can find the answer. So pause your video for just a minute and give that one a try. Okay, 
All right, so hopefully you paused your video and gave that a try. So I'm going to rewrite this as g of f of negative 4. All right, and let's work from the inside out. So I'm going to start by finding f at negative 4. Okay, so my f function, this one right here, is going to be 3 times negative 4 squared plus 2. All right, so negative 4 squared gives me 16. 16 times 3 gives me 48, plus 2 gives me 50. So I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to replace it with the 50. So now I want to find g at 50. So g function over here, replace x. So 2 times 50 plus 1 gives me 101. Okay, let's take a look at one where we work just with those x values. So I'm going to keep using those same functions, but this time I'm going to have a variable inside instead of a number. All right, so I'm going to find number four. I'm going to, I just want to find f of g of x. So I'm not going to get super fancy. Um, sometimes you'll see something inside those parentheses right there, like a 2x or a 3x. Just be careful when you're plugging in with those. Okay, so let me start by rewriting that as f of g of x. Okay, for my functions that I gave you, I know that g of x is 2x plus 1. Okay, so that was back from the page before where I, I gave you the f of x and the g of x. Okay, so that's my inside piece. I'm going to take that out, and I'm going to replace it with 2x plus 1. So now I'm finding f at 2x plus 1. Okay, so very similar to when we worked with difference quotient. I'm going to take my f function. Let me rewrite f up here. So f of x was 3x squared um, plus 2. So I'm going to take this x out right here. Can you see? I'm going to replace it with all of this right here. All right, so it's going to be 3 times 2x plus 1 squared plus 2. Okay, so order of operations, I'm going to square this first. Again, you can go over on the side if you want to, just like difference quotient, and do 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 if you want to. Okay, or you can use our shortcut. So our shortcut is to square the first, 4x squared. I'm going to multiply the 2 together, so 2x and times 2 gives me plus 4x. And I'm going to square the second, which gives me 1 plus 2. All right, let's distribute that 3. Again, order of operations. Next time I multiply, so that gives me 12x squared plus 12x, oops, I forgot my plus sign, plus 3 plus 2. And now combine those like terms, 12x squared plus 12x plus 5. Okay, so again, this time I started with a variable up here, and so I'm going to end up with some variables down here in my answer. Just a good way to check and kind of see um, if you're going along the right path. Okay. All right, so go give the worksheet a try and check your selected answers, and let me know during tutoring if you have any questions.